it's all very close now. We have traversed the country. Really big trip. We've done 3,800 odd miles so far and uh, the days just blur into one another. But... late night but another uneventful EA stop 17% to 95% in 29 minutes. So good morning from central Montana heading towards Butte where there is a, another lunch for America. Got some sleep overnight and need to find some breakfast now. Seeing a few sights on the way back to the interstate here just I-90 Heading west, lots of signs for Yellowstone National Park, very tempting, which is just down to our south here. We're a little bit further over now, but it's a pretty wide park. That's heading about 100, 120 miles out of the way south to back to Wyoming. So we'll save that one for another day. Plenty of parks ahead of us with uh, Washington State being home to Mount Rainier, North Cascades, and Olympic, among others. So at 65%, plenty of space here to get to Butte. 132 miles on the GOM, but Butte is only uh, about 30, 40 miles away. I think the EA site is on the other side, knocking out the miles in Montana. Pretty pretty state, kind of rugged and everything you'd expect. But definitely an interesting place to drive through. of the west, some kind of mountains in the background, just an interesting place. Okay, welcome to Butte, got another EV charging finally, and it's a beautiful EV9, but let's get ourselves plugged in before we open that. That's another one that fired right up. This is an older site. You've got the Chadamo there, which is not characteristic of uh, newer EA sites. All the rest of CCS, and uh, it's good actually. It's a nice to see another EV. Haven't seen many in the South Dakota region. I don't think anyone was charging while we were in any of the locations. A couple of Teslas up in South Dakota in the Black Hills. Um, what else have we done? All of the Montana stops yesterday, didn't see anyone. Did see the XC40 recharge at the Jeep dealership, but again, that was a uh, the only charger for 100 miles or so, so you'd expect to see some action around there just by virtue of it being on the map. But for now, this is up to not super impressive, 113 kilowatts you'd expect a bit more so maybe we could call this derated we'll see what it maxes out at in the end but don't really need much here it's uh, not a very big jump and uh, just the hills really making the difference i guess but i'll have some time to use the facilities maybe grab a coffee and move along okay well the town of anaconda caught my eye with a little trail that might be good for eating and uh, having a little walk so plenty here <laughs> Probably should mention amenities while I'm here. Good site if you're looking for a sunrise. You've got some squeegees. The uh, Flying J is an older one, but actually pretty well stocked and nice. Very friendly folks. Lots of breakfast options. And that's about it. You've got that. Uh, there are some hotels across the road if you were staying. And wanted to just use okay, it looks like an old ski and mining town. Or a mining town that was turned into a ski town. Anaconda, Montana, a little bit west of Butte, there's I-90 rising up to head to Missoula, there's I-15 north-south heading to Helena, and there's the rest of the coast, but for now let's get some morning hike in, 
um, to do this historic trail. Let's take a walk. I guess that's the end of the trail but interesting I like it when they do the information along the trail on a particular theme so it makes sense this was a copper mountain or a copper mining mountain and a copper producing town so this stuff was shipped back east and over the ocean to Wales this uh, tower is the large, one of the largest freestanding brick buildings. It's the old copper smokestack. So kind of synonymous with the town. Reminds me of those towns up in Colorado that we used to go through on the passes in summer on the way to Denver from the Aspen kind of area. And just a nice trail to kind of get some of the history. And the mining equipment strewn around, old wood flumes and pieces of equipment so we've got a little bit of that history embedded in the trail lots of nice viewpoints interesting little town ski area as well of course in winter but we'll be heading west now a bit further northwest to hit Missoula there is actually a charger in Coeur d'Alene both of these are now Walmarts again so we're back in that territory and then we'll be on into Washington the final state as we head west Oh, there we go, we've caught up with the EV6 or EV9 again, Missoula, Montana. I thought we'd have our first icing incident, which I guess we did, but they've buggered off, so not uh, actually a big deal at all. easily 20 minute charging session turns into a fun hour or two in a brand new place uh, hard to tell from the parking lot but the footage that i can overlay will show what a fun little farmer's market that is really nice downtown river walk lots of activity family friendly fun and uh, looks like this is just the beginning so really interesting place thank you very much to jeff the kia ev9 owner for recommending this he was on his trip to buy some farm produce but uh, for me it worked out as a falafel and cold brew stop post walmart so this is the contrast with road trips will take you to this kind of place <laughs> the uh interstate exits and that kind of thing and that's all well and good but uh, sometimes there's opportunities to explore and uh, maybe if there were charges downtown i would have done that all on my own steam maybe there are i don't know and uh, that's probably something to think about in terms of not focusing purely on electrify america pilot flying jays all that kind of stuff but anyway got the recommendation enjoyed the food and have some coffee to uh test out in the aeropress on my travels so good times very happy and uh, you can see the heat is starting to pick up now so we'll probably lose some of this efficiency but uh, anyway we're at 3.2 3.3 on the uh, previous stint but now we're gonna need to crank up the AC because it was not on before just open the windows and let the 65 degree air roll in let's get cranking to Idaho
on dipping between 80 plus miles an hour speed limits and 45, 55 restrictions. But it's all good when you've got beautiful scenery to look at and even being stuck behind a camper on half ass roads can be pleasurable. But we're holding up pretty well here, even with uh, higher speed limits. Heading almost to the other side of Idaho seems to be perfectly well within reach. So obviously the slowdowns help a little bit, but a lot of that has been 80, 85 and not a problem at all. So pretty happy with that, especially in the hills here. Some of it helping out going down, but uh, 124 miles out, a couple of hours driving, depending on whether we get lots of this or maybe an hour and a half if we get back up to speed and then we'll be charging in Idaho albeit briefly because right after that Spokane Washington and the final state of our westward bound trip all right Post Falls Idaho Flying J just a quick juice up here but we had a really good stint there 180 odd miles 23 left in the tank so could have gone a, about 200 plus on 91 percent charge so happy with that but this should be auto charge easy to plug in let's go okay so slightly odd behavior I don't think this actually was iced. I think it was someone waiting for their key EV6. So it cleared out fairly quickly. Let's see here. This is my session. Let's see what it gets as it's shared with an Ionic 5. Won't stay on too long. I just want to push on into Washington. So they're at 150 kilowatts, 55 state of charge, I'm at 173, so it's splitting pretty well there. So it's not quite full power obviously, but that's not a bad performance with the uh, two EGMP cars on, one getting 150. One getting 170. I would be surprised they're not getting more than me. I would think I should get a bit less, but maybe it's because I'm at a lower state of charge. It's an interesting observation, I guess. But not so good that that one's not working. I'll report it, obviously, but tried with the card, tried with auto charge, tried with uh, the app. None of them worked. So it does show online, but not helping me out at least. I think it would be easy to stop someone's charge. <laughs> Did the accidental thing here. It's not actually the best. Uh, usually when we're used to these canopies, you know, compared to the one in uh, Pennsylvania, which was all front and center and proud. This is kind of out the back. Got some bollards there. You're out by the containers and the bins. So I'm not sure you'd want to randomly charge by yourself, but I'm not going to be here too long. I'll just kind of get some footage for the Network Arctic channel and then I'll uh, unplug maybe at 25% here, 30%.
Okay, Post Post Falls, Idaho. We have Spokane Valley. There's two Electrify Americas here. The other one was at a Walmart, so I chose this one to avoid doing that. Uh, immediately feels just more spacious, more salubrious kind of area. Fred Meyer is a grocery store, so that's up there. It's got a Starbucks in it. There's a nice coloured Kia EB6. I don't think I've seen that colour up in the metal before. Anyway, let's get plugged in here. Um, and as you see, there's two there, one eight miles away, and uh, I guess that indicates good EV adoption here. I'm not totally sure, but I'm on Charger 1. These are brand new, not expecting any glitches. I've actually lost my pin finally, the little plastic dongle. Not sure where that came off, but not going back to get it. Have to find a spare at a Hyundai dealer at some point. But here we go, six of these bad boys. And really the only downside with Electrify America, the startup sometimes takes a while. Got about a minute's worth of uh, waiting. Sometimes that was a bit quicker. That should ramp up pretty quickly, 15 minutes to 80%. Looks right in line with the usual. So all I can really say is that Electrify America, with the exception of one or two stations that had a unit offline or made me do a bit of a stall dance, has consistently got me across the country. This is uh, about 300 miles out from Seattle, maybe a bit less uh, now that I've driven into Washington itself. You're one or two charges away from the West Coast at this point, and Electrify America has probably done 80-85% of the charges. Um, and really, I, I can't say that it's been a problem at all. Pacific Northwest is uh, reputedly more of a problem area, and I will test that out. Won't take it for granted, but this is a good site. This has six pretty wide open stalls. You couldn't do a pull through here or a trailer in any uh, real arrangement, I don't think, without taking up two stalls. So. That's uh, a dint against it, I guess, but maybe there are other places that are more suitable for that anyway. Um, as it stands, I need to arrange a place for tonight, and uh, I don't have too much time to wait here, so I will crack on with that, and uh, we'll see how this charging session progresses, but all good so far. Okay, another 25 minutes charge session done. Uneventful. Fifty-seven point five kilowatt hours in twenty-five minutes. Got a prologue and an ID four charging. It's the first Honda prologue I've seen. Out and about, and we have. A solid 210, 93% again, I'm just going high at a lot of these places because I'm doing planning at the same time and by the time I look up, car is at 85%, so it's within our free charging, I don't have to be anywhere at any particular time, so why not let it go a bit longer? Anyway, that's what it is right now, and let's go on to our next Central Washington stop.
bizarre finds. I've got windmills on this trip. Plugging into the place. This is a uh, wild horse wind farm. Somewhere in central Washington. <laughs> um, it came up on a list of places I was looking for campsites. Obviously this isn't a campsite. <laughs> But kind of a fascinating place came up that had a bunch of NEMA 1450s. Now obviously normally you'd want to do that with uh, a campsite and just sleep overnight. This place came up near another place that I looked at for a campsite that was not open. And uh, I mean, it's not a campsite, but wow, look at this. <laughs> I just didn't expect this kind of place in Washington State. Cows grazing down there on the hillside. The wind farm obviously is the biggest piece, some solar right here. But it's a drive up the hill so there's not a lot around here. It's kind of between um, a place called George which has concerts, I'm told. Hence, a lot of the uh, campsites are all booked up, or well, they're not open. But uh, this is between that and Ellensburg, which has a bunch of chargers, uh, fast chargers from Electrify America, Circle K, and uh, another one, I think. But it's kind of fascinating. It's all kind of open. This is a visitor center to give you all the information and there's some interesting flora and fauna but big solar arrays not so much solar up here as uh, wind obviously it's quite a big difference but what a find I'm used to seeing all of the turbines now we have them in Pennsylvania, there's wind farms not far from a cabin we stay at, so we've parked near them even, but uh, only one or two. Having so many, I mean, I couldn't even begin to count. It's got to be getting close to the hundreds just through the number I drove by on the way up. But quite a set of things. Might even get a good sunset up here. Don't know if I want to wait that long, but uh, you can't argue with the panorama. Okay, so Ellensburg, Washington, much uh, messing around later. So this is uh, new cable theft. Now this kind of emphasizes that it's a problem here, right? Because uh, I haven't seen that anywhere else. Now maybe I've just missed it, but I know it's much more of a issue here, California, Washington, Oregon, than uh, for me. Juiced up, and then I think I'm gonna stay around here for the evening, because it's getting late. But it's also an upgraded station. I thought this was an older one for some reason. Just the old 150 kilowatt and 50 kilowatt Chadamo. But hopefully we'll be up to a good rate of knots here. It's always got this kind of recalculating bit at the start as it pumps a bit more power in there. Temperature's gone off so it's not quite as bad as it was. 82 degrees Fahrenheit and should be good to go. So uh, yeah, took a bit of uh, detours. Let's see if I can put it on the map here. I was kind of actually looking for campsites, places I could uh, perhaps hold up overnight and uh, get a decent view in the morning of a sunrise, um, but everywhere seems to be busy. There's concert, a country concert in this area, in one of the gorge venues, so all of the stuff around there was either closed or full. Uh, Moses Lake, I had a quick look at, that was full, so started to get the message that that was not going to happen and just uh, booked a hotel instead. But in doing all the searching, I found the uh, place up here 
in Kittitas County, which this may still be, but anyway, it's uh, up in the hills here, way up in the hills. It's about a three mile road, even from a road that was already going up, and then another three miles up, so you uh, burn a lot of juice on the way up, but then when you come down, it's three miles of uh, pure regen. So that was kind of fun, like a mini Mount Washington, but a really nice facility up on the hill. And really, this is just the final charge of a day that took us... We started over in Butte, I think, not far from Butte this morning, and then headed up through Missoula, or actually Anaconda, which was uh, a little morning hike, just uh, as a diversion. Then Missoula, which was wonderful, really nice lunch from the farmer's market. Uh, thank you to Jeff from the EV9. The only other EV I saw in a whole stretch through Montana, really, other than a Tesla and uh, not much else. So we're only a stone's throw from Seattle now, and very close to this northwesternmost point, Cape Flattery in Near Bay, Olympic National Park down here. In any case, it's all very close now. We have traversed the country, 3,800 odd miles so far, and uh, the days just blur into one another, but lots of fun. EA really has been rock solid. I really can't fault them. Not much else to report. And I think I'll end the day here so that we can take tomorrow as a day around Washington State.